Six and four, uh, and, and they had their bowl game against Arkansas, Kansas. Interesting. They go six and four. Uh, let's hand out some grades. Let's start with the offense. The offense, I'm going to give a C. I'm going to give a C, and people who watch this show are going to hear. They're going to. They're probably tired of us saying this, but this comes down to. You just can't ask Max Duggan to go out there and to win do it by himself. Everything. <laughs> to do everything, right? Now, I think Max Duggan's really good. I like Max Duggan. He was great lie. this year. Um, I thought he was really good this year. Yeah. Uh, I got nothing bad to say, not too much bad to say about Max Duggan. But basically, he was their whole offense, and they were not able to find consistently a secondary threat, specifically on the ground, right? Mm-hmm. They're leaning on a lot of young running backs, right? Three freshmen were their three leading. Well, let me rephrase. Max Duggan was their leading rusher mm-hmm. <laughs> at the quarterback spot, but the next three leading rushers for them were all freshmen. Okay, mm-hmm. and Darwin Barlow, Zach Evans, and Kendra Miller. Okay, those are their next three leading rushers. They could not find offensive consistency on the ground, and as a result, that kind of hamstrung them when it counted. Right. When you take a look at some of the games that they should have won, if they had had that little bit of offensive diversity, they were not able to have that balance. We talked a lot about how, in the, when we were talking about AM, about how Isaiah Spiller made Kellen Mond more dangerous. Mm-hmm. They could not consistently find somebody to make, uh, to make uh, um, Max, Duggan. Uh, Max Duggan more dangerous. And that's the problem. And that's what and- ended up hamstringing them. The offense was, was good, mm-hmm. it was okay. But it could have been great if they were able to find a, a reliable running game. And that was so frustrating because you literally saw the games where they did have someone else to rely on. They were blowing people out of the water. Like, there was no doubt heading into the second half that TCU was going to keep rolling on those yeah. games. And it was just, it was there, but it wasn't executed consistently. And that was very frustrating. I agree. So, that's my offense greatest seat. Defense, I'm going to give an A-. minus. Um, I liked this TCU defense. That's not a surprise, right? Now, I would say, again, if we're picking this, I would say it's closer to a B plus than an A, but A- minus is where I landed. Um, I thought that the secondary was really good. Mm-hmm. Um, the front did not get as much pressure as I was hoping for, but they were still pretty darn good. That's that's probably asking too much, uh, but I think we've just grown so accustomed to what Gary Patterson defenses can do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought the defense overall was excellent. Um, and, and there's not a whole lot really to complain about. Um, I thought that especially the secondary was, was, was very, very good. Uh, the front seven was pretty good. And as a result, I landed on an A- minus for the defensive grade. Uh, the team MVP, um, I'm going to go with Trevon Morig. Uh, you know, I never – you know, I, I see Trevon Morig, and I also see Trevon Morig Woodard, and I never really know uh, which one to call him. But uh, anyway, Trevon Morig, the safety – uh, the uh, the spring uh, uh, the the Smithson Valley product uh, is the easy pick here. He was a Jim Thorpe Award winner. Uh, I, I don't think uh, I, I need to, to tell you that he was um, uh, he was our pick coming into the year as the top defensive back in the in the state. Uh, he was uh, he was a, a guy who was the top returning preseason All American. He ended up winning uh, the Jim Thorpe Award, which is handed out to the best defensive back. Uh, yeah, Spawn Moore was great. He's really really good. Uh, and and a guy who I think really led the strength of that defense, which was on the uh, the, uh, in the secondary. So yeah, that's going to be a big big uh, shout out key to fill for them. They've got to find another guy back there. Now we go when you go looking into 2021. um, It's a couple of things. One, uh, they are going to um, they they are going to have to replace some key pieces, especially in that secondary. They're losing Trevon Morg and our Darius Washington. Um, so that's, that's a, a loss, uh, pro Wells, their tight end is heading into the NFL as well. They, they got hit really hard by the, um, by the, uh, the transfer portal as well, but they've also made some, some moves. For example, they're bringing Chandler Morris. I don't know if you guys do heard that mm-hmm. they're bringing Chandler Morris as at the quarterback spot. Now, I don't think he's, go- I do not think he's going to usurp Max Duggan, but you know, strange things happen. Um, this is a. This is a TCU team that will bring back a lot offensively. Mm-hmm. Now, one of the things about being very young offensively is that you take your lumps and you're able to then bring back a lot of those guys. So when I talk about how their four leading rushers 
where their sophomore quarterback and Max Duggan and then three freshman running backs, well, all those guys are back, right? All those guys are going to have another day, year under their belt. Uh, that's huge for them as well. I believe they bring back four of the five offensive linemen as well. The offense could really cook. Defense is going to be middle of the road, right? They're losing a lot of the stars, as we mentioned, uh, like Morig, like our Darius Washington. But a lot of the nuts and bolts are also going to be back as well. If you're looking for a team that I think could be poised, if the Big 12 slips a little bit, and it kind of comes back to the pack now, you're talking Oklahoma. If you're talking about another team that could launch into that top three Mm -hmm. going into 2021, I think TCU could be that bet. If a lot of those guys, those youngsters on the offense, take that next step and the defense kind of holds firm at what they are. I think this could be one of those teams that could be in for a leap in 2021. I'm bullish on TCU heading into 2021. Yeah, uh, and the other thing is – the other thing is, too, on they didn't sign anyone on early signing day, and then they only signed 13 people on national signing day. Mm-hmm. So they knew. I feel like Gary had it in his mind all along. Like, last year they saw some flashes of positivity. So go ahead, run with those new guys. Don't, don't give them away. Don't try and bring in other transfer talent. He's doing his thing where he's keeping mm-hmm. his people. He likes what he's got in the system. He just needs to put it together now. So I think that that's all in the plan. So I think it's fair to be bullish on him heading into 2021. Yeah. I think so. So that is a TCU Hornfuck. 